Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today, I want to talk to you briefly about the second episode of Season 1, Text Me When You Get Home. And this episode is about the kidnapping of Hannah Anderson. Very good. This show so far is really good. Now, Hannah Anderson and her friends used to hang out with this guy named James DiMaggio Jr. James DiMaggio is the best friend of Hannah's father, Brett Anderson. Okay? And, you know, he was like an uncle to the children. So, we're going to get into that. So, let me give you a little background about James DiMaggio so you can understand this creep. Because that's exactly what he is. He's a creep. Okay, so, James Everett Lee DiMaggio Jr. He was born January 17th, 1973. And he died August 10th of 2013 age 40 and was a telecommunications technician in San Diego. Now, according to a friend, DiMaggio, his father, James Everett Lee Sr., died exactly 15 years ago to the day before his son. Right? The friend said the elder DiMaggio was accused of attempting to kidnap the 16-year-old daughter of an ex-girlfriend in 1988 committed suicide on August 10th of 1998. Though the public records indicate that his suicide was in, instead of was instead committed on August 10th of 1995. Now that's the father, okay? That was um his father was going to kidnap his ex-girlfriend, but he died, you know, of suicide. Now, James DiMaggio Jr., we're going to call him Jr., um, was the best friend of Christina's husband, Brett Anderson, and he was like an uncle to the children. He helped with various tasks, such as driving Hannah and her friends to gymnastic, gymnastic meets, during which he had unnerved by her saying he would like to date her, okay, if they were the same age. And they showed that too in the show. They, he was, you know, picking the girls up. He would drive them to their meets and everything. And he would also let them hang out at his house and drink and party or whatever. He told Hannah that if he was her age, he would date her. And that's creepy to me. Why would a grown man say that to a 16-year-old? Just, mm, just creepy. Now, during a trip to Los Angeles with Anderson, DiMaggio also complained she wasn't paying enough attention to him. Anderson's friend said she did not like being alone with him and was creeped out by his comments on the drive from the meet. Now, Junior, DiMaggio Jr., listed Hannah's grandmother, Bernice Anderson, as the beneficiary to his life insurance policy in 2011. While he lived with her, he intended the $112,000 for Hannah and Ethan. So Ethan is Hannah's little brother, but did not trust their parents to handle the inheritance. The revelation prompt members of DiMaggio's family to request a paternity test to determine if he fathered the Anderson children. Because why would you want, why would you have Bernice Anderson the children's Hannah's grandmother as a beneficiary on your life insurance policy, and he intended for that money to go to Hannah and Ethan, but he didn't trust the parents to handle the inheritance. So that's kind of weird to me. And that's kind of weird to me. But you know, hey, it is what it is. Now I don't think in the show they mentioned that, so I'm getting this. From some information online. But I don't think in the show they mentioned that. I don't remember them mentioning that. So. The DiMaggio family. Um, requested a paternity test. To determine if he fathered the Anderson children. Now Brett called the suggestion disgusting. And an Anderson family spokesperson. Said DiMaggio had not met Christina. Until she was six months pregnant with Hannah. The DiMaggio family later withdrew their request for a DNA testing. But it still is kind of weird. Why would you want... I understand Brett is his best friend, 
But why would you have a life insurance policy for someone else's kids? If, you know, for the kids to inherit. Because I don't think he had children of his own. So maybe he felt like he had a connection to the children because he was best friends with his with the child with the kid's father, Brett. Now, according to release warrants, Demarja received letters from Hannah Anderson, which were found in his home by investigators and exchanged over a dozen calls with her before the murders occurred. However, San Diego C County Sheriff Bill Gore said Hannah Anderson was a victim in every sense of the word and did not willingly go with DiMaggio. Investigators do not suspect any complicity on her part. Gore also suggested that authorities may never be able to fully determine the reason for DiMaggio's crime rampage. So, you know, in the show, he said that he was leaving, you know, he couldn't handle his law cabin anymore. He, it was going into foreclosure, which was a lie. And he wanted, you know, them to come over and have fun and chill and everything like that. So Christina and Ethan went over there. Hannah came after. But by the time Hannah got there, Christina and Ethan were already murdered. Okay. Because when she walked in the house, she saw her mother's belongings all over the table. And that's when he threw Hannah the, the handcuffs and told her to put it on. This guy was a, a weirdo. And so if you're best friends with her father, why would you do this? So he already killed, you know, he already killed Christina, which is Hannah's mother, and Ethan, which is Hannah's brother. And took her, and they went for a drive, and they started hiking. But when they left, he lit the cabin on fire, okay? So, Hannah's friends are calling her and texting her and saying, hey, what's going on? Why aren't, you, why aren't you answering me? And all this kind of stuff. And she just didn't answer. Ooh. So, um, when they went after the house had cleared from the fire, they went in and they saw all types of stuff that was in a the bag. They found Christina, which is her mother. Her body was covered with a tarp. And they found Ethan. You know, the remains of Ethan in the house as well. And he also found, like, stuff like, um, you know, just things in the house, like handcuff boxes and just things that you would try to kidnap somebody with and what you would use. They found that kind of stuff in there. And it was just a, this is just a, like a disturbing case. It was a disturbing case. Now, while they are out, okay, um... The shooting and the rescue happened. So we're going to get right into that. Now they were, you know, driving and they was trying, he was trying to get away and stuff like that. On August 10th, the police discovered DiMaggio's campsite and the FBI tactical agent killed DiMaggio near Moorhead Lake around 5 p.m. DiMaggio fired at least one shot at the officers, causing the officers to fire back and killing him. Zamaggio was shot six times in the, the head, the arms, the upper torso. Anderson had no visible injuries, which was good, but was taken to a local hospital for crisis counseling. Afterwards, when asked if she was glad James Zamaggio was dead, Hannah Anderson responded, absolutely yes. Okay. Now she has no mom and she has no brother, but she still has a father. He kidnapped her. Now what he was going to do to her, we don't know. But in the show, you know, she was waving like a plane had came. Was they, the plane had came over the campsite and she had like this armored thing and she was waving the flag to try to get some help. But she didn't know, and James didn't know, that the FBI tactical agents was in the, the woods already. So when he fired his shot up in the air, and he fired, see, in the show, they didn't show him firing at any officers, because I don't think he knew. He just fired up in the air, and then he fired low, and that's when they killed him. But... My thing is this, I understand that James DiMaggio was like an uncle to Hannah and, you know, and her brother, and he was cool with the friends, and he let them come over to the cabin and party and chill, but 
Like, Hannah should have told her parents, you know, hey, this is what James is saying to me. This is weird. And I'm not blaming her for anything. Don't think that. But I think if she would have told her parents about his behavior, they would have got rid of him a long time ago. And what I mean by getting rid of him, meaning stop all communication with him and stop talking to him. So I absolutely think that if it, she would have told her parents, because none of the parents knew what was going on with the drinking and the partying at his cabin, you know, and they didn't think anything of it, of him being, the kids being up there because he was like an uncle to them. So to me, he always been a creep and he's like a, he's a creep like his father. Okay. But to die on the same exact date as his dad, then that's creepy to me. That's weird. But yeah. It was a very good episode. It was a very good episode. But I just wish that when, you know, young girls, if they watch that, they will learn that, you know, tell what's going on. I don't care what anybody is like in your family. I don't care if they're like a friend. You have to tell somebody how somebody is talking to you. It's That's not okay. He was a grown man, 40 years old, 40 years old, telling her. You know, if he was her age, he would, like, date her. He would definitely date her. And it sounds weird. I'm looking at, I'm like, what is this man talking about? It was crazy. But I'm glad they did, you know, they did what they had to do to get her back. So I'm glad that she's okay and she's alive. But now she has to go through the grieving of her mother and her brother. But, you know, thank God she still has her father. So... Let me know if you saw this episode because some of the things that I was reading to you online, they did not have in the show because it's like a 30 minute show. I think they don't have time to put everything in there, 30 or 40 minutes. So they put the most important stuff that happened. And, um, yeah, he was just doing too much. He, he did way too much. Mm -mm. He was creepy. He was definitely creepy. All right, you guys, let me know in the comment section if you watched the show it's really good. If you have not, check it out. It's only two episodes in. I'm not sure what the third episode is going to be about, but it's on Lifetime streaming service. All right. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.